So, um, well, it's very impressive to be here today. <laughs> um, well, I'm Dimitri, um, a PhD student from the University of Nantes in France, and a contributor to RosaFS, um, which is a scalable distributed file system. Um, and one of its main features is to uh, rely on an erasure code in order to uh, protect the data. So, we'll deal with that. Uh, and let's talk a little about uh, the distributed file aspect. Oh, well, everything starts with um, the question how to improve data protection or data or performance of my um, storage system. And well, Red appeared to be a solution, but um, well, it's a good sort of solution in computers when you reach the limits of your resources, of your technical resources, it's complicated to go further. So, today, what is common is to distribute your data um, across a set of storage nodes, and um, and when you need to, when you reach the limit of the system, you just bring the new nodes in the, in the network and improve um, well, the global resources growth. Like that. Um, okay, so we have a solution that do that in an efficient way. Uh, well, it's, it's provide a unique. Uh, Both provides a unique namespace, meaning that you can access uh, your storage files just like you do. Um, well, in your computer, um, I mean, everybody uh, that's um, joined the network is able to mount a file system which rely on different storage nodes, on a set of different storage nodes, and provide scalability. In a way, we can grow the system, flexibility, we will see that, because Brother Case is composed of three uh, components, and you can localize all the service. Um, heterogeneity, meaning that just will, um, there's no other consideration, physical other consideration, because you can install it in a community service, uh, access uh, the access to data <coughs> transparency, and <coughs> and what is really the purpose of this tool is data protection. So um, let's. See. How it is done here. Okay, so the fault tolerance is usually done like this. We write random information uh, across <laughs> the node of, um, of our networks. And when you want to, to read this data, you actually read a subset of it, and it's enough to, to get the information back. The point is when you have a failure, uh, well, it's inevitable. Um, Failure can come from the node, from the link, or any other consideration. When you get it, you just grab information from another node. The, the traditional way to do that is to replicate. <coughs> data. Meaning that if I want to store a file, I will actually produce three copies of the files and distribute these files um, on the nodes of my network. Um, and that's okay, but. Um, it's fine, there's no complex, um, a huge complexity here, but you actually store three times um, the, the amount of data that you actually need. Um, so, what's the problem with that? But this is a curve of, of extracted from a report that um, it, it wants to allow about the fact that uh, the amount of data is really growing a lot. And um, one of the points is that uh, data protection plays a major role in this, in this, um, in this fact. Um, so, okay, what we want to do is to find a way to reduce this, um, this uh, storage consumption but still providing data protection. So, what we propose is to use erasure coding, which is um, an alternative technique to data replication. The idea here is um, when you want to store a file, you actually cut it into k data blocks. And using a mathematical tool, you are able to, um, 
computes the relevant information. So from the Kelly data block, I create n parity blocks. Then when I um, distribute these parity blocks uh, on, the, on the network, um, I am able to reconstruct the um, former information from uh, any k subset of the parity blocks, meaning that I am able here to face two failures and um, uh, and the point here is the, that the storage overhead is only 1.5 so it means that um, <coughs> I actually uh, provide the same data protection that using data replication but I store half of the data so this is really great um, the problem is that um, usually original coding brings complex oper uh, computation because depending on the tool you uh, use, um, well, encoding and decoding can be very, very complex. So <laughs> we propose to use the Merge Transform, which is um, a mathematical tool long developed at the University of Nancy. And uh, it is formally well, it's used for a lot of application and formally for uh, medical topography. So it's very convenient to go into this script uh, to um, And okay. the purpose of it is to uh, compute human information from user data. Um, and the particularity of this tool, this mathematical tool, is to provide redundant information only based on uh, addition of uh, information. It means that uh, for the performances, uh, you actually just do draw operation, which is very fast. Um, and um, encoding and decoding uh, are very well. It's not a bottleneck anymore. It's not a bottleneck anymore to some other solutions. Um, it's very transparent <laughs> in the um, in the um, So here is how it works. Okay, we take the file, we cut it into lots of data, and these blocks are then uh, encoded into uh, more information and real information. So we form K data blocks as well as six data blocks. And um, if any two of my nodes, as my installation node fails, I'm able to retrieve the data. Okay, so let's talk a little about the architecture of RoboVS. Um, there are um, three components, three component components in RoboVS. The first one um, is the metadata server, uh, a node that uh, manages all the information about um, well, project information and data allocation. So uh, it's uh, it received requests from clients, meaning where should I store the data, where should I get it from. Um, then the storage server are um, well, this is for data. They are uh, independent, meaning that you can uh, use uh, which file system you want to use. So, so this is actually a meta file system that is uh, on, the, on the top layer um, and relying on the under uh, on other types of local file system. And you can provide this um, this file system through different kind of protocols. So if you want to speak with uh, by CNCIFS or IFD, it's possible. Um, then, obviously, the clients. The client is uh, relies on Fuse. Um, and it's the client that do the coding and decoding operation. So it's by distributing all the, um, all the computation to the clients. Um, OK, so this is uh, an example of a production we use. Um, well, um, here at the bottom you have the back end of the system. So we have six nodes here that um, uh, they are whole storage nodes. And as well, they are giant, and um, two of them uh, are the meta, uh, all the metadata service, services. One is um, an active one, 
and the other one is passive ones, it's just um, because in the case this uh, server is not going to be a high availability system. Um, <coughs> and well, in this platform, the idea is to um, provide an efficient um, storage system to five clients uh, using um, well, they do video editing, so it's, um, it's a kind of application that is very uh, I.O. intensive. And we can, uh, by the observation, we can see that uh, there's no uh, problem induced by the code. Meaning that even if we do um, very intensive applications, there, uh, there is um, no problem with the uh, computation with, with um, the um, then we have some um, funny applications with um, uh, students, our uh, students in the University of France. So um, this project was built to test RoboFS, um, well, to, to test it, the limit of the software and try to see if it's possible to use it on a regular path. Of course, um, we do applications like uh, video streaming on it. And um, and yes, it's fine. Um, okay, so thank you. Um, well, have a look at the at the GitHub webpage project. Um, if you have any idea um, to share about what kind of feature you want to, to make, uh, to provide a proper test or anything, if you take that, that we have this email and. Have a look at the Fake for Cloud IR project, uh, which is dealing with um, a rigid code comparison for this uh, unit storage.